Four Flies on Grey Velvet is the final chapter in horror master Dario Argento's animal trilogy. But flies are insects. Shut up, you! Unlike most films in Argento's lengthy and lauded body of work, Four Flies on Grey Velvet has largely flown under the radar. Rights issues prevented the film from seeing a DVD or Blu-ray release for many years. Still, a few non-official releases saw the light of day. I first saw Four Flies on Grey Velvet on a DVD that a friend of mine got from God knows where. It was barely watchable. The image was badly distorted thanks to an overly aggressive full-screen reformatting. The audio, when you could hear it, was like a fresh bowl of Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, and pop. And the dubbing was out of sync. Some years later, I got my hands on the shameless 40th anniversary Blu-ray release, which I still have. Somewhere. Four Flies on Grey Velvet is a unique entry in Argento's early works, where Bird with the Crystal Plumage and Cat and Nine Tails were pretty straightforward giallos. Four Flies feels more autobiographical and adventurous from a narrative and stylistic perspective. The movie stars Michael Brandon as Roberto, a young rock drummer who finds himself caught up in a deadly game of blackmail and murder. Really, my only qualm with Four Flies is the character of Roberto. As a protagonist, he's pretty flat. He's not a particularly nice guy either, which makes it difficult to sympathize with him. He's cold, he's distant, and he's just kind of dull. Argento does do an excellent job of making Roberto a kind of avatar for the viewer. You can easily put yourself in his shoes, feeling the paranoia and desperation in knowing that someone unknown to you, but who has intimate knowledge of you, wants you dead but not before driving you crazy first. Luckily, Argento and co-writer Luigi Cazzi surround Roberto with some of the most colorful and endearing characters in any of Argento's works. The legendary Bud Spencer plays God. Actually, his name is Godfrey, but he's a guardian angel type figure to Roberto. He spends his days eating raw fish in a shack down by the river with his pet parrot, named Jerkoff. Oresti Leonelli plays the professor, a delightful tramp, and Spencer's right-hand man. He's the kind of guy who would go out of his way to help an old lady cross the street. And then pick her pocket. Then you have John Pierre Mariello, who plays Orosio, the private investigator who's never solved a case, but is still hired by Roberto to seek out his blackmailer. Mariello's flamboyant and colorful performance all but steals the movie. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Gildo DeMarco, who plays the poor postman. If he's not being given what for by the neighborhood Karen for accidentally putting her neighbor's porn mags, in her box. He's being mistaken for the killer by Roberto and beaten about the head with a stick. All these supporting characters provide Four Flies with some genuinely fun and funny moments. But I know what you're thinking. What about the kills, the body count, and the bloodshed? Well, there isn't much of a body count here, and the kills are tame by Argento's standards. There is one great sequence in which a character is attempting to blackmail Roberto's blackmailer. The plan is to meet at a public park and play Let's Make a Deal. Only the blackmailer of the blackmailer loses track of time, gets locked inside the park, and then loses their life. Four Flies is all about suspense and tension, which Argento is able to skillfully create and build upon right up to the end. Argento also sprinkles in all these wonderfully paranoia-inducing moments where, during the darker scenes, you can see what appear to be cat's eyes glaring out at you from the black. I also love the score composed by Ennio Morricone. It's playful and mysterious, kind of like the movie itself. Another qualm of mine with Four Flies on Grey Velvet is the killer's reveal and motivation. I understand that Argento and Cosi didn't have a particular ending in mind and had written most of the script without knowing how it was going to end. And you can feel that. The killer's demise is pretty cool, though. Four Flies on Grey Velvet isn't on the level of Deep Red, Tenebrae, or even Argento's debut film, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. But I still like it a lot. And I'm overjoyed to see it get this kind of release from Severin Films. The 4K presentation sourced from the original camera negative boasts a high level of detail, clarity, and depth. The skin tones look natural, and I noticed very little damage present from the source material. Four Flies isn't one of Argento's more colorful films, but when there is color, it pops. However, the darkness, which is a key element in the film, isn't murky or overly grainy. The audio is full-bodied, complementing Morricone's beautiful score, and the dialogue was crystal clear. Overall, I'd give both the picture quality and the audio quality on this release a perfect score, 5 out of 5. 
There has been some controversy over this release when it comes to the packaging and the price point. The image that was displayed on Severin's website during their Black Friday sale resembled more of a aero style limited edition box. But as you can see, this is just a standard slipcase. Granted, it's a heavier duty style slipcase, not quite on the same level as one of Vinegar Syndrome's slips, but above your standard slipcase. And yes, this was a very expensive release. As eager as I was to purchase it during Severin's Black Friday sale, I did balk at the price. And that price, with shipping, at least in the U.S., came to 60 plus bucks. I don't regret purchasing the release, but I know that that price point definitely locked out a lot of people who wanted to pick it up. And now it's apparently sold out and I'm sure it's going for three times that price now on the secondhand market. This is a four disc release. We get the 4K UHD, two Blu-rays and the soundtrack CD. This release also includes both the director's cut and the English language cut. The director's cut includes two additional minutes not seen in the English language cut. As far as extras are concerned, and there are a lot, first up we get Lord of the Flies, an interview with writer and director Dario Argento. It's 28 minutes and 12 seconds in length. Mr. Argento discusses how difficult the making of Four Flies was for him because he, he added autobiographical elements to the story. He discusses how he wanted to do something different from his first two films, something more bizarre with plenty of twists, and how it was a prelude to Deep Red. He discusses being inspired by authors like Raymond Chandler and Cornell Woolrich, the shooting locations, the cast and crew, and much more. Next we have The Day of the Flies, an interview with co-writer Luigi Cosi. It's one hour, 15 minutes, and 22 seconds in length. Mr. Cosi discusses uh, the collaboration process with Argento, the different influences that inspired the story, the characters, uh, Dario and his father's relationship as producer and director, working as Dario's assistant on the film, and what he learned about filmmaking from Argento. He discusses working with Paramount, who would agree to distribute the film, casting, filming, Pretty much everything. Kazi is a one-man making of featurette. His memory of everything is photographic uh, because he was so involved in the making of the film, both in front of and behind the camera. We get the Italian and the U.S. trailers. We get an audio commentary with Mondo Digital's Nathaniel Thompson and Troy Howarth, author of So Deadly, So Perverse, Jallo-style films from around the world. Uh, that audio commentary... Highly informative and very entertaining, by the way. Uh, next, we have Have a Talk with God, an interview with actor Bud Spencer. It's 10 minutes and two seconds in length. Mr. Spencer discusses working with Dario Argento and what, and what kind of director he is to work with. He discusses his incredibly busy career as an actor with 160 credits to his name and more. Next, we have Death in Slow Mo, an interview with assistant cameraman Roberto Davanzati. It's seven minutes and 23 seconds in length. Mr. Davanzati discusses shooting the closing moments of the film using a special camera to capture the demise of the killer in ultra slow motion. Next, we have Time Flies, an interview with production manager Angelo Lacono. It's 14 minutes and one second in length. Mr. Lacono discusses working with Dario on The Cat and Nine Tales and, the, and then months later on Four Flies, which led to a long working relationship between the two. He discusses the shooting locations, his love of shooting in Turin. He talks about the cast, how interested uh, he is to see audiences' reaction to the film today, and more. Next, we have Dissecting Flies, an interview with film historian Antonio Tintori. It's 29 minutes and 40 seconds in length. Next, we have Flies on the Wall, an interview with Alan Jones, author of Profondo Argento. It's 15 minutes and 31 seconds in length. And of course, we get the two cuts of the film on this release, the director's cut and the English language cut. The director's cut comes in at 103 minutes. The English language cut comes in at 101 minutes. This is an exquisite release for Four Flies on Grey Velvet from Severin Films, and it better be, considering how much it cost. This is the best Four Flies on Grey Velvet has ever looked or sounded. We get a plethora of extras and the soundtrack CD. Let me know your thoughts on Four Flies on Grey Velvet down in the comments section below. And if you were able to pick up this release from Severin Films, let me know your thoughts on it.
And what the heck, while you're down there, let me know what your favorite entry is in Argento's Animal Trilogy. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody out there is having a great, safe, healthy, and happy holiday season. Take care, and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.